Hi guys, today we're going to show you how to uh, prep and paint the pine wood. We have this piece of wood uh, between our closets, it's unfinished. Today we will fill all the holes, including all the knots. We will apply a special primer and then we'll be able to paint this piece of wood. To fill all the nail holes and uh, the knots, we'll use the uh, wood pro uh, wood filler from Depp. This one imitates the natural wood. It's uh, shrink and crack resistant, dries hard. So we will have to use the power sander to sand this filler. To prime our pine wood, we'll use the uh, bean primer. This one is shellac based. It's a little bit more expensive, but the shellac base ensures that it sticks properly to our pine wood and it properly seals all the knots. Uh, this prime actually pretty much sticks to any surface and uh, even on the can it says that bean is the only primer that reliably seals knots and sap streaks, which is the case with our wood. You see all these knots. To sand our patches we'll use the orbital sander with 120 grit sandpaper and it's always a good idea to attach the vacuum cleaner to the sander when you use it. We'll use a couple of putty knives. Here I have the 3 inch and the 6 inch putty knives. By the way, if you guys are interested, I will leave the links to all the products and uh, uh, the tools in the description. So this is how our wood filler looks like. Again, this imitates the wood. So I will get some on my putty knife. Don't forget to close the lid all the way because otherwise it will start drying. And now I can start filling all the gaps. As I said before, when this thing dries, it will be very hard, almost like wood. That's why we need to use the power sander. So just remove all the excessive filler. I'll add a little bit more here. I'm trying to fill it in one go, but you can also fix any deficiencies after you send this first coat. And now I will start filling the rest of the holes. The smaller holes can take up to six hours to dry. Uh, deeper areas like the gap between the wood and the wall may take a whole day so it's a good idea to leave it for a day and then just come back the next day and uh, start sanding when you press it make sure that some filler actually comes out from the holes and i will fix some minor holes and also i will go over each knot and uh, cover it with the wood filler first and then as I said before we'll use the primer shellac based primer to seal them afterwards keep going until you finish all the dents and holes on the wood and as you can see, using two putty knives make your life a lot easier. You can manage the compound effectively this way. Our patches are now dry. As I said before, they are very hard. It's even hard to scratch them and uh, this is how the nail holes look like. 
Right now we will start to send our patches. Besides the power sender you can also use the sandpaper and the wooden block. So what you need to do is just wrap the sandpaper around the block this way all the way around and then then Kuza comes Kuza. then you can cut off the extra using the knife Kuza, be careful Now I can use this block to send the patch. Uh, why do we need the block? Because it allows the sandpaper to send evenly without going uh, inside or out of the patch. So just go on top of the patch and sends it evenly like this. Uh, as you can see, this is another way to do it, but since we have so many patches right now and uh, we have this big one right here, I will use the power sander. Again, we are using the power sander, 120 grit sandpaper, and as you can see, I have attached the vacuum cleaner to our power sander. And whenever you sand anything, it's a, always a good recommendation to use a face mask. So it's gonna be loud now. It is loud, but as I said, you can see how quickly we managed to send uh, this area here. And I still have to do a little bit here on the corner. But overall, I'll keep going the same way and patch the whole, pretty much the whole surface, including the wood as well. And uh, yeah, then we'll be able to prime it. The whole sending process took less than five minutes. I'll show you guys how it looks now. Patches are quite smooth. And as I said before, in case even if you oversend any of these uh, patches, you can always fill them after we prime the wood. And this is how it looks like now. Looks pretty good, but as I said, I might have to come back and do minor patching afterwards. To prime our wood, we'll use a small tray with a liner. We'll use a small roller. I'll show you guys. This is how this one looks. And this is actually an interesting one. You can turn it and use different angles, but in our case, we don't have to do it. We'll just do it like this. Also, we'll use an old brush or you can buy a cheap one. Uh, this way you can easily throw it away after you're done because this primer will be very hard to wash off. Now I will open our can. I will use the putty knife to open the lid. And you might see it like this, like brown. 
it's supposed to be white. In this case, we just need to stir, take a, a wooden stick and just stir the primer until it becomes white. It may take a few minutes. Now it's starting to look uh, the right way. As you can see, it is white now and uh, now we can use it. We can use a brush to clean uh, the stick. Now I will pour some in our tray. We don't need too much, just enough to prime our board. For now I will close the lid. So first I will use the brush to cut the bottom of the wood. Be careful because whenever, wherever this uh, primer gets on, it will stay there. It will be very hard to clean it off. So just be careful and cut the bottom like this. Now I will cut these sides first before I proceed to the uh, flat part. So I will use the brush here as well. You can also use the roller as well to roll these surfaces, but it may not work in every case. And uh, also, as you can see, as since this brush is old, it's not in a good shape and it may leave some primer on the door, which is not uh, terrible in this case because it still needs to be painted. But in your case, just keep in mind that you have to be very careful when you use this primer. And as you can see, if you put too much on the brush, it starts running right away. Alright, so this side is pretty much done. I will now do the other side. Okay, our left side is almost done. Uh, and a couple of things that I want to mention is uh, the drying time for this primer is about half an hour. Uh, after that you can put another coat, which we will do as well. We will actually let it dry first and then we will lightly sand the surface and put another coat. Now I will use our roller to get some primer into it. Again, don't use too much. Then we can start rolling. Don't press too hard, just gently. that is controlling the process. Again, I'm going quite slow and gentle so that it doesn't splash around because, as I said, it's going to be hard to wash it off. And the last 
last stretch. Okay, our first coat is done and as I said now we will wait for half an hour before it dries completely. Now we will use some uh, plastic to cover our tray. This is important because otherwise uh, your roller and your brush uh, will dry very quickly with this product. So I'll get some in the brush, some in the roller, leave it here like this and uh, okay, this is good. If you get some primer on your hands, which is actually quite likely to happen, you can use a small rag and you need to use methyl hydrate, which works very well in this case. Get some in the rag. And then you'll be able to clean it off uh, quite quickly. Our first coat is dry. Uh, the priming process may uh, raise the wood grain. So what it means is uh, the wood may uh, feel rough to touch. So to fix that we'll use the regular sanding sponge and lightly sand the whole surface. So first I will go over the side. Again we have to do it lightly, we don't want to remove the primer either. And now we can put our second coat and we'll do a light sand after the second coat is dry as well. Our second coat is complete. Uh, you can now, if you're done, you can throw away the brush and uh, the roller, but I will just wrap them in plastic. This way, if I need to do any more priming using this primer again, be careful, I will be able to reuse this brush and uh, this roller. All right, uh, our priming process is complete. Next step will be to wait until it dries, light sand, and then we'll be able to paint our pine wood. I'll quickly show you guys how it looks like after the two coats of primer. Looks great, actually looks almost like a finished product. And now we'll use two coats of the wall paint, the eggshell, to paint our pine wood divider in the middle. I will apply some paint in the middle first and then we'll roll it up. Now the paint will stick to the wood and as you can see we don't have any stains at all. So I'll put this coat and then I'll do one more on the whole wall and pretty much the procedure is complete. 
And this is the final result of our work. The wool is completely finished, including the divider in the middle. As I have mentioned before, we don't have any stains. I'll show you guys again. This is where the big patch was. And everything is completely white. Again, we have two coats of primer and uh, two coats of egg shell paint on our pine wood now. Our wall is now completely finished. We still have to paint the doors, but we'll show you that in a different video. But for now, thank you guys for watching. I hope this video will be helpful and uh, we'll see you in the next one.